This is it. We're officially rolling. This is episode 397. Wow. Yeah, that is the proper response to that. 397 of No Laugh Track Podcast. Acme's podcast. We're here on the stage. It's a Thursday afternoon, and I am here with uh, someone who's never been on this podcast before. Never. I've been doing this eight years, Brett Ernst, and you have never been here. I've been doing comedy 23 years. Yeah. (laughs) It's my first time at the club. Well, it's about time. Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> so I got So here's something I want to start out with. Um, w- when I first saw your name on the calendar in the back room there, I'm like, oh, uh, Brett Ernst, I know he's funny as hell. This is awesome. How long has it been since he's been here? He's never been here. No, he's been here. I know he's been here. Well, obviously, you know. They know, right? I, you've never been here before. No. I, I, I think you and I have met before. I think. Uh, you know what? I would say... Because I'm very good with faces. Unless it was at the House of Comedy, I've been there a bunch of times. Did you go on the road with and do radio shows when that uh, Vince Vaughn... Yes. You probably came in and did the... I was working on a morning radio show. Where, though? In, in Minneapolis here. Did you come to Minneapolis maybe with Sebastian and do some morning radio to promote that? I don't remember. Man. I know I did San Francisco... Because like, we did a press tour where, like... They would. Me and Sebastian were always together. <laughs> See, and, th- and I'm connecting you. Yeah. I bet it was here. I yeah. really feel like I met you. I think you. I think you're right. Years ago. I think we did here. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh huh. Wow. There was probably well, there probably was like a premiere or something maybe at the Mall of America. Does that sound familiar? Or no. Anything? No. It, it would have been what, what they did for us is they sent us to different cities right to promote the movie. Sure. Which, uh, you know, timing is everything. Uh. Because right when we right when the movie was about to premiere, they had the writer's strike. Okay. Remember that? Yeah. So nobody could do late night television. Vince didn't go on late night television or nothing at the oh, time. Oh, yeah. So the press tour was like sending all the comics. Because we, we actually said, hey, you know, at that time, <coughs> I think I was doing, what is it? I was doing comedy like 15 years, maybe 14 years. So, you know, when you're on the road, you, you do all the radio stations. You know a lot of the radio people. Right. Because you always come in and, you know, they, you, you always do the morning radio. Yep. And uh, so they sent, like, me and Sebastian together and Cap and Ahmed and then me and Cap to certain places and the director. And we hit all different markets. But yeah. it would be like two would go to four cities. The other two would go to the other cities. And so I think you're right. I yeah. think I was in Minneapolis with Sebastian. Yeah. Well, welcome back. Well, thanks, man. <laughs> I'm usually spot on with faces, though, man. Oh, let's see. Back then, I was uh, the ultimate peon. I probably barely left the little studio, dark studio I was in, answering phones. So it was maybe just a very brief, uh, you know, hey, nice to meet you. But oh, you didn't, you didn't. Host. I wasn't the host. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, no, okay. No, okay. no I was. A, that makes sense. Though. I was uh, sixth down on the yeah, you're on in the, the mailroom r- ladder rungs there. Yeah, <laughs> sleeping your way to the to the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that didn't work out. I don't know which part. I'm not sure which part. Uh, so we got that out of the way. I want to talk about your show last night. I watched from the back of the club here. Had a nice crowd here and socially distanced uh, crowd here at Acme. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, I sold out. <laughs> <laughs> there was a thirty seats, but yeah, it's weird that that definition has changed. I know it it's has. temporary. Just temporary. Hey, I'll take it, man. I uh, I remember because um, I I've, I've been doing the road. I have not stopped. I saw that. Yeah, there's certain clubs like I did San Antonio, I've done Cleveland, I've done uh, Tampa, West Palm, um, Sacramento so far during the thing. But I also lost about, I'd say about 15, 20 dates. Yeah, I bet. You know, did you do the one in Sacramento where they wear the headphones? Yeah, I did it outside. How did you, did you like that? Yeah, it was pretty cool, man. Describe uh, what it was. Mike E. Winfield was here a couple months ago. And did he, he did talk about sh- it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he really it's liked a, it. It's like the silent disco, man. It, it was pretty cool because you could hear everybody, and uh, you can hear, like, but you nobody can heckle you. Like, it, it's it's weird. Like, you 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 hear you hear yourself, Yeah. but it, you could kind of hear them. You know, uh-huh. and um, but it, it, you know, all the all the noise is kind of muffled, so it's just, and they're, they're actually more attentive. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. Just just for that that physical thing of having these having. And you know, it's funny out. too. Yeah. It's like I realized, and I guess I don't know if Mike said the same thing because he's been doing it a while too. Um, I realized how much I don't need laughter. Really. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess you could kind of see it. But it's like, uh, you know, you get in your own little, uh, you know, I, I think that's, 
a, a, a sign. I, m- I remember being younger, talking to a lot of the older comics, and, and um, I forgot which one had said it. It might have been Dice. I think Dice said it to me, where he's like, y- you, there comes a time when you're okay with silence. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, where you're like, you just, uh, and I, I get it now. I get what he's saying. I even think I've... Because I, I do, I know what you mean as well. Even in in terms of doing this podcast, mm-hmm. if I if there was a moment of silence in that first year or two when I was doing this, yeah, holy shit, it would it would t- tear me apart. Like, oh, I, right. I paused for a second. I didn't know what I was going to say. I lost my train of thought. It's the worst thing ever. Yeah, you know, collect yourself. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. It's fine. And it also means that you know the audience is paying attention. Yeah. You know. Uh huh. It's when they're booing you that's when you have a problem. <laughs> 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 but with the headphones, you don't hear. <laughs> So, uh, how, where were you when everything shut down this I was spring? In, I, I was very lucky, man. I, I went down to Florida, and I'm trying to think what the last, I was at the, I was at Miami. So, my mom lived down there, right? Kay. And I had recently got divorced. Yeah. So, I was going to stay down there anyways, and then try and figure out my next move, right? So, I was going to say, look, I'll stay with my mom, and then, uh, you know, just fly out of f- Florida to work. To, to, to work. Yep. And as you know, I still had the mortgage on my home. I had to pay until until that got all settled. You know, it was a rough beginning for me. It's 2020. And then uh, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. I'm, I'm a uh, I'm a divorced fellow who had a house and all that too. Remarried since then, but yeah. that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You oh, got, yeah. So you did get remarried. I did. And yeah. Why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> 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 like you were free. You were out. You paid your dues. No. <laughs> So and then I was just trying to figure it out, and then all that happened, and then yeah. all those gigs got canceled, yeah. and then my mom's 76, even though she looks like she's 50. Um, I, I said, you know what? I was, you know, like everybody in the beginning, very, very concerned. Hell yeah. So I, I said, Ma, you stay in the house. Let me go out. And then uh, it's so funny. I actually posted a video, but, you know, I went to high school down there. Yeah. And spent a lot of my early 20s down there. Yeah. You know, I went back to New York, and then I was back down there in my, in my, in my 20s. So I know everybody down there. Okay. And I'm, and I know lo- most of my friends are not like, you know, on the up and up. <laughs> but I literally had a buddy of mine go, yo, I got my hands on some toilet paper. I'm dead serious. <laughs> yeah. And he had like cases of it. So I'm driving and I'm laughing, but I filmed it where I'm actually literally going to pick up the toilet paper. <laughs> so I told my mom, don't worry about it, you know. And I went and I picked up toilet paper, paper towels, which I still boggles my mind. Like, of this just shows you how far gone we are from the the little house on the prairie days when we're hunting our own food and, you know, having to get water and, and had an outhouse. Right, yeah. That out of all the things that, that we think survival's... Like, you could take a wet rag and mm-hmm. wipe your ass with it. Yeah. But everybody goes and grabs paper goods. Yeah. Things that you can use your, your towels for. I mean, food made sense. Yeah, food makes sense. Toilet paper made zero sense. And, and you know, zero. And, and same with the bottle of water. It's like all you got to do is buy a, uh, with a HEPA filter if you're worried about it. Yeah. I mean, I remember. I mean, we're we're in the same age range. Oh yes. Drinking from the water hose. Yep. You yeah. drink from the. Nobody had. You went home and you drank from the sink. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that water. No, I put my put your mouth right underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what's more worse is the plastics in the bottle, but everybody grabbed the bottle water mm-hmm. like it's a hurricane mm-hmm. and toilet paper and paper towels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I just anyways. had a conversation with my wife last night I, because of this, you know, it's numbers kind of see look like they're going up again. Yeah. And I'm like, if it, if people start fucking hoarding shit again. Oh, yeah. My God. Because now at least you go back to the stores and the, everything's full. Well, Florida don't give a shit now. So they you're be- staying back there again, no, right? No, no, I actually, now I moved to Vegas. I bought a place in Vegas. Oh, okay. okay. So once things opened up, I was able to get a spot. All right. So now they don't care there either. The casinos are open, you know. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, New Jersey, New York here, you know, they're, they're, they're acting like, I mean, it is night and day the way people are carrying on here. Like then where I've been. Oh, know. I bet. Yeah, well, I mean, even I took a trip just to northern Minnesota, or, you know, in the middle of the sun, July. And mm-hmm. it's night and day from being in the Twin Cities to going, you know, two hours north. Well, I mean, we still wear masks and everything, but it's not like people are, you know, shielding themselves like <laughs> this is going to be the end of the fucking world. 
You know what's funny too is how the CDC went. They only reported. Uh, you know, remember when they they were like, "Oops, only six percent actually died just from COVID," and COVID's real. Nobody's saying it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, my one of my dear friends has it now. He could barely breathe when I talked to him on the phone. My my friend's father died from it. My buddy's mom died, but they also had other ailments mm -hmm. as well. You yep. know what I mean? So it, it, it is dangerous. Yep. You know, but you know, it's it's like okay, then you you quarantine the people, the older people. It's much easier. This is what doesn't make sense to me. It's much easier to protect those that are most vulnerable. Abs yeah, you're right. Right, and you can really shield them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Than it is for everybody to act as if we're the all vulnerable if right. that makes sense yeah no it absolutely does like yeah it's, it's a lot easier. easier for my parents to stay home who, right. who are retired yeah yeah and than me who has a family and i gotta bring some money in and yeah, yeah it's else. like you yeah. know look i mean men risk their lives to, to go kill a bear back in the day <laughs> you know what i mean i'm okay with the sniffles with, with the covid that's what i call running to a cub to get some food i say i gotta go kill a bear yeah <laughs> but you follow me like yeah, most men are like yeah all right you know it's just so amazing how far it's just because we're all spoiled mm -hmm. yeah we really are and the toilet paper is the perfect example of that yeah like I, the, if they run out of my soft my favorite soft kind i'm fucked <laughs> I'm not using Scott. I can't use a one ply. What the fuck? What am I? Yeah, Scott. What is that? It's like the shit that's in a holding cell. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> you see that? Your, your ass is done. What? No, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, I stole this out of a, a public bathroom in a public school. <laughs> that's a big ass fucking room. Yeah. You know what? Not switching gears. You know what I don't see anymore? Remember when you were in school and you would that you would get that pink powder for soap? Oh yeah. What the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> what I is don't know. that? Is that like a laundry <laughs> detergent? What the fuck? It's do you know what I'm talking about? He's too young for that. No, you do, right? It was it was like powder, and then you were like, "Why is it? What what the fuck?" <laughs> that was probably yeah. You're right. It was probably industrial. Like if we <laughs> saw the original box, it was used to clean everything, uh -huh, right? Yeah. Like the outside of the school, the yeah. floors, <laughs> the dishes, the your hands, your hair. Yeah, everything. It was that was like what was that shit? You don't see that anymore. I don't know. Probably not safe for anything. Hey, I got I got one more thing I want to ask you about. Uh, By the way, I don't know if you just do. I, I'm fine, man. You know. Oh, yeah. Once I'm awake, I'm good. <laughs> good, 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 good. We'll just we'll just keep rolling here. Yeah. I, so I saw this thing on uh, you know how Facebook will throw up um, advertisements to your social media will throw you advertisements. I don't know why I got this one. I'm not interested. I'm just curious. I'm wondering what your thoughts are on this. It's uh, a link that you hit, and it says, let's work together to find a way to prevent COVID-19. And it's they're uh, trying to get people to do the uh, clinical studies. Fuck no. Right? Fuck here's no. What the, and here's what really caught my eye. Payment up to $740. That's it. I'm in. Oh, you're out. Change your mind. <laughs> I'm fucking in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought it was just going to be for yeah, the, I just thought it was for good free. humanity? 740? <laughs> Fuck it. Why not? I'll roll the dice. <laughs> Fuck it. You'll risk a tumor for 740, right? Yeah, nah, I, um, you <laughs> know. No cost uh, study related testing for COVID 19. Invest uh, you may get a vaccine or you, of course, may get the placebo. So then you. I mean, then you're safe as hell. Yeah. Then they're probably just giving you that pink powder is the placebo. I mean, dude, listen, I've never even taken the flu shot. Yeah. You know? I don't know, man. I'm not into putting that things into me. I just think, like, now, I mean, it's not even. They're, they're just I don't trust it. any of this, man. They're, they're just studying it. I don't know. I For years, you know, the thing that's advertised, you know, on the TV and radio is these clinical studies. The people, I don't know. I Thank God I've never been desperate enough for money or brave or stupid enough i don't know to want to do any of that stuff yeah i'd, I'd just, rather yeah i'll leave it to if somebody I get desperate, else i'll just sell my butthole <laughs> 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 i'll start blowing dudes for cash before i no uh what <laughs> no remember in uh um because uh what's the what's the, the movie with the uh the alien guys that uh with will smith Oh, uh, Men in Black. Men in Black. Remember yeah. when they when they go and they grab the the National Examiner, and they're like, "If you want to find out what the truth is," oh and, yeah, and the Inquirer, yeah, and and he's like, "That shit's real." That's right. Yeah. The more 
I used to argue tooth and nail. My one of my best friends, Sam Tripley, has a, has this tinfoil hat conspiracy right, podcast, <laughs> and I used to argue with him about everything. Okay. Yeah. And again, he's one of my best friends in comedy. There's like you know, him, Maj Jabrani, Sebastian Cap. There's like guys that we all came up together, and and you know, uh, there's like a crew of us. Yeah. And Sam's one of them. And me, we would get into it. I'm starting to think he's right. Uh oh. Because a lot of this shit is starting to play out in a way that, like, I'm like, okay, maybe because everybody makes them out to be crazy, right? Because you got to think about it. Even if there's one kernel of truth, let's say you're speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. People will then make it that you're the one that's crazy. This person's crazy. Or take something that you said that may be outlandish and focus on that. Yeah. Right? Because I don't believe all of it. But there's a lot of truth to what is starting to happen. And, and I'm starting to be like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because cause of the information age now, this is the most I've seen the media be not have control and then go after the internet. Yeah. Right? Like when you had Twitter, I, I forgot what newspaper, that they banned a reputable newspaper that was trying to break that Biden story, the Hunter Biden story. Oh, New York Post? Was it New York Post? I think, I think so. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, and I've seen those pictures. Have you seen them? No. See, th that's the insanity of it. You have to see these Hunter Biden pictures. And it, it, by the way, this he's the greatest. Per Have you seen them? Aren't they awesome? I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's smoking crack with hookers and shit. Like, I think the guy is great. I think it would have helped his persona. <laughs> but the fact, you know, I definitely would have voted for his father if, if, if I would have if I would have known about these. The fact that I had to see these through like like remember you got that faces of death video. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> the fact that the mainstream media is not covering this, right, and that you have to there's people that don't even know about it. Yeah. Isn't lets you know that this is bullshit, man. Yeah. That 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 there is some type of control, and these vaccines that now they're trying to push on us. I don't know, man. I'm getting that tin. My, I'm starting to get a tinfoil hat. Yeah. I'm like, dude, why? Why? Because does Sam Tripoli get a uh, flu shot? No. 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 Never. Not at all. <laughs> Listen, some of the shit is. If you ask, you know, it's so funny. If you ask people, are you right 100 percent of the time? Everybody would say no. Of course we're wrong, right? I hope so. But then they don't know when they're wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not always. Right. Like I'm one of these people. I consider myself an intellectual, but it doesn't mean I'm smart. It just means that my emotions don't come into play. When I'm getting information, yeah, my the emotions come into play when I'm giving information. I like right? that, yeah. But not when I'm getting it. If like, and and most of it is sports and me yelling when I'm really just for no reason. <laughs> you know what I mean? But when you're learning stuff, you uh, you just you, you learn. And uh, I don't know, man. I think this this is these past four years with the Trump administration and seeing how things have played out from. The the process of them putting Hillary, robbing Bernie, and then how Trump got in, and then now how, like, you know, the Democratic Party, there was some good, there was a, I liked a Gabbard, a Buttigieg, Andrew Yang made sense, and this is Biden's the best we got. You know, you know what I'm saying? This is what we're putting up. Great grandpa. Yeah, I mean, and now it's just, now it's all, they almost had the cure, but wait a minute, we're still counting votes. You know what I'm saying? It just all stinks to me now. I, I tell you, man, when, uh, you know, people would tease like a month ago, like, well, you know, as soon as the election's done, we're gonna, they're going to start talking about that uh, oh, secure. The thing, yeah. And then, sure enough, yeah. six, six days <laughs> after the election, boom, oh, hey, we're close. That that was my joke. You son of a bitch. I said this. I think all the comics said it. Because yeah. that's how we think. That's the thing, too, man. And then they come after us. That's the other scary thing, you know? We're, we've always, because I always explain to people, comics don't, like, if you have an opinion, they're always like, oh, what do you watch, uh, Fox News? What do you watch, CNN? Right? Yeah. That's not how we think. Like, you know, we're always going the other way sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when things don't make sense to us, we Question see it, it. Yeah, we question it to make a joke out of it. Mm -hmm. Does that make, mm -hmm. That's why you can't be, attach emotion to the information. 
because there's always a bit out of it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> and, then, and then, like, you're seeing great comics making points, and then people are trying to silence them. And, and But uh, I had a joke with this. What I was going to say. I forgot what it was. What were we talking about? You know, I don't, uh, the I'm Biden? The... Oh, the, oh, I, that was, never mind. I was saying, I said, yeah, we're, we're going to have a cure once we figure out which old sexual predators are president. <laughs> <laughs> how would you, how would you handle if, um, you know, they've been having stand-up comics host SNL now. Last, yeah, yeah, you I know, love it. On and off, yeah. What if they came to you and they're like, all right, we're going to have you, we're going to have you host and you're going to get to do 10 minutes of perfectly timely, you know, you get to do your most timely stand-up in yeah. front of the world. Yeah. How would you handle that? Would you love it? Yeah, I would. Uh, I, of course. I mean, you know, I, I, I literally toe the middle on stage. I, I try to. Um, I, I would, I would, but I would definitely attack the left more yeah. than the right because everybody's attacking the right. And, and the right to me isn't the one that's the problem now. You know, it's not. It's the, they're not the ones that the co that are in the comedy clubs. Yeah. So what do you think about like when? Uh, how about then? Since we're talking what about this, what I meant this? by that, by the way, let me clarify that the right is not the one that is trying to silence comedians right now. It's it's the it's the uber left. Yeah, it's the progressive left. Because when I started comedy, you had to deal with the religious right, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, and you had to deal with these conservative people that were always like, you know, but they were only mad about sexual innuendos. Like even if you made fun of Jesus, they didn't care. It was more the sex thing. They yeah. were obsessed with sex, which I also find ironic because they all get caught up in sex scandals. Uh huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, it all makes sense. <laughs> it when all that makes comes sense. Out. Yeah. Like I said, the one that's the loudest and the most accus uh, accusatorial, whatever the fucking word is, <laughs> is usually the one that's doing what they're accusing, right? Yeah. So that was all the shit you had to deal with the religious fanatics, but it was always about sex. Now it's the progressives are like the new religious right. They're always accusing people of being racist. Mm -hmm. When it's like, dude, th no, you know, y you're the one that is, yeah. you know, I'm not. I want to, cause something but you just that said. would be what I would do. I would definitely go after them. I don't think enough people are. I think, I think because they're, f they're afraid to be labeled or blackball. They can't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they are the bully in the schoolyard right now. It took it. Like, I mean, Jim Gaffigan finally exploded earlier this year. Oh, on, did he really? On social media, yeah. What did he say? Oh, he would just. It was one of those nights when Trump was at was some, what, a rally or something, and uh, Gaffigan was apparently home watching it. And at the same time, he just fuck this, fuck him. I mean, it was it, it was very out of character for Jim Gaffigan to be using. A Wait, he was mad at Trump. He very mad at Trump. Oh well, I'm saying a lot. Of, that's 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 almost hack now, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah. We all know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the other thing, too. Nobody, I never liked that guy before he got into office. Me neither. Right? I, I thought he was a douchebag. And, I hated and, The Apprentice. But, you know, when he was part of the Democratic Party, everybody loved him. Yeah. Kushner was a contributor. Everybody loved him. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, all the shit that, that they're bringing up now, they already knew when they made him a TV star. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Then I, but I never liked him. But the comic in me, I started liking him because <laughs> he's just so fucking ridiculous. Oh, I, I mean, he would just say something, and you're like, then he'd say he never said it. Brett, I think it's like, dude, yes, you did. Yeah. We all, we all heard it. You know, a any time <laughs> in the last couple of years, if I know he's going to be speaking on TV. It's on the TV at my house. Yeah. Not because I'm a fan, because it's so fucking entertaining. Well, I used to love, though, he would just power up. It's like that. <laughs> See, he was, the, he was like the press's worst enemy. Because nothing they said to him. Re, it, re, do, do you remember? Oh, yeah. um, did you ever see that movie Shredded? Not Shredded. Uh, skinnier? Thinner? Th oh, yeah. When the gypsy goes, Thinner. Thinner. Yeah, Thinner. Thinner. And, and he gets skinny. Yes, yes, yes. And then he calls his mob friend. And he's like, I need help. Because he was a lawyer that defended the mob guy. And then this mob guy is going after, um, he's going after like all the, the, the gypsies that put the curse on him. And then there's a moment when he goes to the guy, he said, because he's really dying, he said to the mob guy, he said, I, you know, listen, I want to thank you for this. You know, I, I, you're, you're risking your life for me. And, and he goes, you know, you're, you're my true friend. And he looks at him, he goes, don't, don't get it twisted. I live for this shit. This is what I do. I love doing this. It's the same thing with Trump. He loves, like, you know what I mean? Like that's why they they if they call him he it nothing they said to him 
move the needle. He's yeah. just like powering up, and and, <laughs> and it's like, holy shit! There's because other politicians are more concerned about what they're gonna say. <laughs> This guy just didn't give a fuck. Uh, I feed off your anger. <laughs> I feed, he's feeding. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, wow, this guy doesn't give a fuck. It's the same, but then I like, that's why I like Hunter Biden now. You know what I mean? So that's, this is why you don't want me voting. He's the new Ronnie Reagan. Yeah. <laughs> Remember there was always the party, uh, party animal Ronnie Reagan. Dude, wait till you see these pictures. If Ronnie Reagan partied like this, there's no way. I mean, this guy is on a whole other level of savage. I love it. Hey, I want to talk about something else before we run out of time here. Um, so my wife and I were watching uh, a documentary series this week. We watched the last two episodes, and the next to the last episode of this documentary series, I'm like, holy shit, they just mentioned my guest on the podcast this week. Oh, the comedy, the comedy store one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I sh- I'm glad I got a mention at least. They never showed you, did they? They didn't interview me, man. They, they didn't interview a bunch of us, but you know what? Uh, I don't think they could. I mean, there's just so much to cover. Yeah. But I was glad I got to mention, yeah. So did Cause you... Because I put my heart and soul in that place. I mean, I, I, you know, I've been there since almost 99. Wow. And, you know, there was an era at the comedy store where, like, nobody came. and I uh, didn't really know that. Yeah, it was, yeah. like, dead. And it was, like, me, Sebastian, um, Sam Tripoli, Maj Jabrani, Caparulo, Rogan, Diaz, Dice was always... It was just this era where, like... You know, we were like we used to call ourselves the land of misfit toys. You yeah. Know? And um, at that time, like the other comedy clubs were booming all the time. But you, you go to the OR at like 1130. There's maybe eight people there. Steve Byrne, uh, D- D- Dove Davidoff, Brian Callen. Did I say Ian Edwards, Leslie Jones, uh, Whitney, Eliza. Um, God, man, the, the Neil Brennan came. I mean, there was like a time where it was just us. Yeah. Eric Griffin. Yeah. You know. And uh, it was it's, it was like our home. Were you there the nights when uh, like a th- something that stood out to me in the documentary was uh, Eric Griffin talking about oh I showed up and do four hours and none of it was material. Yeah, well, what what oh what do you mean Eddie Griffin? Eddie, did I say what did I say? Eric Griffin. Eric Griffin. Ed, yeah, yeah, Eddie, Eddie Griffin. Eddie, Pardon me, yeah, Eddie Griffin. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Griffin. Eddie, Eddie did a lot. Of time. Yeah. Eddie uh, Eddie was one of the best. Uh, well, see, we, the comedy store went through stages really quick. It was with the bookers. Right. They're, like when I got there, Freddie Soto, rest his soul, his wife. Uh, and Freddie was one of the best comedians like Freddie. Freddie Soto, God, I can't even I, I don't even know where to begin. There's too much with this. Uh, there's comics that you would watch in the OR that you would just look at and go, you know. Um, you learned from everybody, in a sense, from following them or watching to go up before them. Right. And uh, and that's the beautiful thing about the comedy store. There was no there was no MC. So, you know, one person goes up, the next person goes up. You bring each other up. So, you know, within my almost 20 years there, uh, I followed. I remember following Chris Rock. He's just like, who's next? And and oh, not Chris, actually. uh, Dice. Chris one time just didn't. He thought the MC was coming up and he was like, good night. And he just started getting off stage. And then I had to. Run up when people are filing out. No, they had to go see him. <laughs> We're not done. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, there's a there's a guy that's you don't even know of that's about to go th- <laughs> throw 15 minutes of hacky shit after a legend. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, uh, you know, you get to work with uh, all these people, but they bring you up. Yeah. So when you're if you're a seven year comic or a six year comic, you learn to follow like Burr and whoever's bringing you up. You know, no matter where your place is. Yeah. And uh, you just so anyways, Freddie's wife was the booker. Then it went to Duncan Trussell, which that was fun. Duncan just went alphabetical. (laughs) Then Tommy came and the Tommy years is like when it was dark. Tommy was a guy everybody did an impression of him and Mitzi were like. And then when Adam, who's there now, thank God, Adam is like taking the comedy store to a whole other level. He's the guy that they show in the documentary. a lot. Yeah, yeah. Adam. Adam is uh, the booker. Adam's one of my. Now, the funny thing is. Adam and Paige, who books the improv, were both waiters at the at the Arizona Tempe Improv. And I was friends with them when they were waiters, you know, when I was starting out. That's the cool thing, too, is that our family is so incestuous, in a sense. Is that the word? Where we all fuck each other? Yeah. No. <laughs> you know, we all, we've all... I assumed. <laughs> we've all grown up together. Yeah. You know, so, like, like I remember when I got there, Steve Renazizi, who was on the league, 
Oh yeah. He was a door guy there. Cap was a door guy there. You know. He's been here on this podcast. And yeah, then you, you meet all these you you meet all these people and you grow with all these people. We used to spend like uh you know, Fourth of July parties together and, and nobody was famous. Ari Shafir was we used to work there. Uh and you know, it, you're just part of this fraternity. Yeah. And um but I think the documentary was was very, very was done very well, you know. And what I love about it too is that, you know, there were people represented, like Sam was on it, Sebastian was on it, Maz was uh, no Maz wasn't on it either. Mm-mm. But uh, you know, at least they talked about that that era. Yeah. But me personally, that's the that's really an interesting time. That's like that was a very interesting time. That's when the inmates controlled the asylum. Yeah. You kind of wish there'd be like a whole another episode just dedicated to you guys. Th- uh, there would there'd be enough material. I'm guessing. Oh, it, it would be honestly. You could do a, a ten part series on that. T- I can't even tell you. Yeah. The shit that went on. Yeah. I mean, with Don Barris and Brody. Rest his soul. Oh, Did you ever yeah. have Brody here? No, but I was a fan. But Brian. Oh, Brian Holtzman was featured on there too. Thank mm-hmm. God. Brian was just. Brian is. He's still one of the bravest comics that, you know. Is he someone that tours or just works no, around there? No, he just works the store. Just that. And you know he's he's Wild. every he's every comic's favorite comic. There. Yeah. When he goes on, you know some shit's gonna happen when all the comics run in the room. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, that's the beautiful thing about the store, man. I mean, to me, it's it's my home. Um, you know, I moved out of L.A. And then uh, I just moved back to Vegas to be closer to there. I don't want to go back to Hollywood right now. L.A., California is too expensive. And, you know, it's been out of control. But I, it's still my home. It, like, I, I can't explain it. You go there and I always tell people, like, just imagine if you're a football fan. And there's a place where you can go. And you could see Troy Aikman drinking with Steve Walsh. I mean, with uh, uh, <laughs> Steve Walsh as a quarterback for the Hurricanes. Um, come on, man. Steve Young and like jo- and Brett Favre and Warren Moon. And then all the younger Mahomes will be there. You know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. you, there's just a place where like Emmett Smith is drinking with, with the Barry Sanders. And that's the store. Yeah. You can go to the comedy store as a fan. <clears throat> Love that. And just walk around, and all these people are walking by you. Bill Burr, Chappelle pops in, and you know, the growth of this store. I don't know if they talked about this in 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 the um. I haven't seen all the episodes. Okay. What uh, this is my theory on it. You know, the podcast and the internet is really a comedian's medium, mm-hmm. right? So when you think about MySpace, it was Dane Cook that really blew that up. Right. Absolutely. And then the podcast world was uh, Corolla, Mark Marin, and then Rogan took it to that whole Howard Stern level. Yep. You know, and. You know, we've always, always are the ones that have been the forefront of so like we watch that social media thing and <laughs> we're like, yeah, yeah, we know we know about the algorithm and three to five minute bits and all that shit, you know, because w- that's been our world for the past 15 years. Yep. Because of the podcast and because of Mark Marin and Rogan and Burr, everybody talked about the comedy store. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because there was so much crazy shit going on from, you know, uh, uh, from the Eddie Griffins to the to the Dices fighting uh, Dom. I know they talked about that. Yep. And <laughs> that was great. Mm-hmm. We were all watching that going, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it's like a celebrity death match, you know, on MTV. <laughs> that everybody started coming to see it. And it became this, like, I mean, when I tell you we couldn't get 30 people in the OR on a Wednesday. Yeah. From ni- now, we had two shows sold out every night, main room, two shows, you know, and it was just, it's like a fucking, we had to build another bar. They took Paulie's uh, uh, digital studio he used to have in the back, and they just made it a bar where the comics could go, and it's just us because... You know, there there are too many people out front. Holy crap! Right? You know, like if Chappelle's there, he's he's he. If he goes out front, it's it's a madhouse. Sure. You know. Yeah. So they're not even now. If you try to perform there right now tonight, they're closed, right? No, right. But they're do, they're trying to do stuff in the parking lot. I think I was looking on their website. They're the government's not uh, working with them very well. On Dude, the, it's just ridiculous, yeah. man. I mean, I don't even want to get into. It. It's just so ridiculous. So you know you. you you can eat outside, but you can't eat outside with somebody talking. Yeah. 
I mean, are they really – what are they doing? I don't understand what they're doing. None of this makes sense. No, no. I no, I, when things, when things uh, don't agree with uh, common sense, yeah, it hurts my brain. Well, the thing is for me as a Sicilian, you know you got to start following who's, who's earning off of this, right? That's, that's always the key. Oh, follow the money you're saying. Follow, always. Or yeah. follow like, like, you know, the fact that f- the Pfizer dropped their stocks. The, the CEO, all, 90% of his stocks he got rid of yesterday. Really? Yeah. Ooh. Why? Because I we were talking about this with Paul, who's you know is a very smart guy, the guy that that, that the feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a lawyer. Because they can't make any more money off of it. He's this is the most there are, so he's dumping this now because they probably have the cure, or so to speak. People are earning off of this. Like, you know, just I don't, this isn't conspiracy shit. Just look it up. <laughs> Why the fuck is the, uh, the CEO of Pfizer dropping all of his stocks? Yes. Selling it all. The hell. What does that mean? So what's crazy to me is how in California <clears throat> you can eat outside, but you can't have somebody talk. Right. Yeah. But you could have a guitar player. Sing. Right. But Gavin Newsom. All of his vineyards are open, right? And he's got live music there, but he <laughs> wouldn't have stand up there. So I, I don't get it. You got to bring. <laughs> you gotta, I don't fucking understand. <laughs> it. You got to become a music act. I, guess. <laughs> I have to sing my jokes, or, <laughs> or maybe sing. like I don't know. You better learn to play guitar. See, I, I don't <laughs> until you figure out who's earning off of this, which I can't figure that one out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you can figure out why this makes no sense. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but there's always something involved, man. There's always money involved. You know, it's the same thing with all these old ass politicians from the Pelosi's to fucking Orrin Hatch to Harry Reid. I mean, all these people that are fucking pushing 90 Maxine Waters, I think, is 90. Why won't they retire now? They have plenty of money. <clears throat> OK, yeah, I don't think it's holding on to power. In my opinion, I think they're all trying not to go to jail. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, I think if they lose office and a younger person gets in there because our generation hasn't taken over yet, which is insane. There's no Gen Xers that are not in politics. No. no. It, it, and it literally we're, we're being skipped. It's, it's like you're either you got the millennials starting to come in and you got those old ass, you know, our parents and grandparents that are fucking still in office. <laughs> yeah. You're fucking 90. Go home. <laughs> Take your ball and go home. Right. You know what I mean? That's like it'd be like going back to one of our high schools. Like you're still teaching. Yeah, you're still here. What the fuck? Why don't you want to retire? Because it, 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 I think that if the minute they get away, because in th- that in '96 is when a Republican Congress with a shady Bill Clinton, that's when that Communications Act was passed because they knew this technology was coming, right? They made all this fucking money, and now they're st- they you know. That's when I think we 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 lost. That's when I think all the power. Here comes the conspiracy. Yeah, thing. here we go. Here's your your first uh, episode <laughs> of your new is. podcast. Here we go. That's when I think all the power went from like the Rothschilds, and that group, to China, was in the mid '90s. Now I want to be documented on this because I think that because <laughs> if I, I noticed too that all the movies like this is what, and again you get these red flags. So in Hollywood, when you do these these film funds, all the money is coming from China. Yeah. Right. OK. And and Macau in these areas like, you know, that that you pe- there's so much money from China in the movie industry. And you notice we stopped making movies about America because they pre-sell internationally, you know, but that money is coming. It's not coming from inside anymore mm-hmm. unless it always did. I don't know. But I'm just saying. So that's that. I'm putting it putting that on record. Now, I would right. say mid 90s is when. <laughs> We sold our soul to China. Have, uh, and NAFTA, too, I think. Have you had a chance to meet the owner of the club here yet? Yeah, of course. Okay. You know, he's from China. You have to start uh, or well, we were from mainland. We back. Hunt. He agrees with me on that. Okay, okay. Stuff. All right. right. Is that why you asked me? Uh-huh. Very interesting. Well, because people that are here <laughs> from China are like, they, you want to get away from China. Yeah, very I interesting. I mean, it's a very oppressive government. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's one of those. Uh, see, that's the thing with America is the, the system's great. We just got to clean it up. You know, mm-hmm. it's 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 the the system works. You just got to clean it up. That's all. I uh, I'm gonna change the topic to re- please re- put a bow on this thing. 
we're going to talk football for two minutes. First why, of all, why two? Why two? Only because they because I don't. Oh yeah, let's do Because I don't edit, and I got to leave uh, Joe some time to edit this thing and post it online so people can see it and come to the shows here. Um, Take out all the political stuff; it's boring. <laughs> <coughs> you meant so you accidentally mentioned Steve Walsh. Yeah, yeah, for the cur- hurricane. He's from St. Paul, Minnesota. Just side note. Dude, I've watched him play in, in high school. Really? He's like four years older than me, I think, three, four years. He was yeah. an incredible baseball player, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's odd that I, that I brought that up. Yeah, so just weird side, little side note. What else is weird is that I, I was talking about the Rainforest Cafe and Buca de Peppo, <laughs> and they both started here, and that's my bone to pick with this fucking, uh, <laughs> with this area. What's with the shitty chain restaurants? <laughs> There was a point where I freaking loved Rainforest Cafe, man. I'm not even, not yeah. even going to deny it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I have no idea why. I have, I have no idea. Yeah, who else is from here? Um, you got a bunch of players from, from, from this area. Yeah. Oh, football players? Yeah. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald. Legend. Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, that's the right. Wide he receiver. is. He yeah. is from here, right? Mm-hmm. From Pitt. Yeah, his dad play, uh, worked with the Vikings, didn't He's he? He's still a, a media guy here. Are well, you a big Vikings fan? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you guys are gonna kick the cow- my my team's ass. It doesn't even next matter. Week. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter for us either. It doesn't matter for. It's sort of a lost season. It's uh, everybody sucks. It's I don't. I'm, I want to go on record. I was talking with Paul about this. Uh, uh, we went out to that little place to grab something to eat last night, before you know before it closed at ten. Right. Um, I think that the twenty somethings coming up. I, I I'm not a fan of the millennials. Um, I think that they were just a generation of critics. Maybe we needed that. I don't know. Evolution, time will tell. Okay. But they haven't contributed anything. They, there's no new genre of music they've created. You know, there's. N- n- I, I, I mean, I, I like them. I think they're, they get a bad rap. I think they're a product of evolution. But I also want to go on records as saying the ones after them, the 20-somethings, I think they're going to be great. Yeah? I think they're the next great generation. Cause they all they when they they now they're the ones that are in comedy clubs that they laugh at everything. Right? Yeah, they they're into they grew up on the podcast. They grew up on the go fighting against the censoring of the millennial. Yeah, you know what I mean. The 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 they're uh they're dealing with this shit now. You have kids that are are you know they they've realized things a little bit not nowhere near as what the the greatest generation had the depression this is nowhere near like the depression right and and that's the other thing we had 18 year old kids storming normandy you had 18 year old kids in a boat saying look and guy listen guys as soon as this thing do- goes down run for that fucking beach and about 90% of you are not going to make it yeah. and they're sitting there as kids in a boat knowing this and you're telling me I can't go go to a bar without a mask on, and I'm worried about that. You you follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, this new twenty something kids, I'm really really seeing. I'm really liking what I'm seeing. You know, and and I'm gonna also say you're gonna make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> but like Billy Eyelashes, the kid, the singer, that's yeah. a talented kid. Yeah. And you're seeing a lot of kids that are of that of that age in that early twenties that are really talented, that are trying to. Be, become artists they're pushing they're pushing things does that make sense she i just heard this morning her video just got over a billion views on she's youtube she's a talented kid man billion billion views i mean you could just and you know who else was talented and uh i know you want to wrap this up <laughs> justin bieber man you know that, uh push stop please that kid gets a bad <laughs> rap man think about this <laughs> the kid plays like five different instruments all right now you're a little kid and you're thrown in a pop pop music and and i think it's funny how a whole industry that's against bullying every talk show host made fun of him oh yeah right there were people wishing the kid dead when he was like 12 remember they had that contest where uh we could in the world you could pick where he's gonna play next and (laughs) and they they put beirut or like (laughs) the west bank and you know no and he grew up with all these people hating him yeah and then he had like people he was throwing eggs at a house and it made the news you know just being a kid yeah and you know that was i think a a a talented kid that could have really done something 
I, for some reason, I'm I am I'm guilty of that I am stuck in the, that spot where I look at him as still that spoiled kid but he in the drive-through with the fucking chrome car. Yeah, and I the, mean, he hosted or he was the music guest or host or SNL a couple weeks ago. It's the only one I haven't watched. Really, we missed it that night, and my wife's like, "Are we gonna?" I'm like, "I don't want to." By the way, Beaver. you're the only person I know that watches SNL. <laughs> <laughs> Is it good? The first twenty, I enjoy the up up until a weekend update, and then I don't watch anymore. Really? Yeah. Are the sketches good and everything? Some some are, yeah. Yeah. Not uh, not a hundred percent. I like watch it up until a weekend update. I really enjoy weekend update. Yeah. Mm hmm. You know, I I wish John Stewart would come back. Well, yeah. You know, legend. I wish, like I always say, if people ask my politics, like I'm a John Stewart liberal, and a South Park conservative. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Because I think they, they hit everything on all <laughs> cylinders, man. I think, <laughs> dude, the, the, the last few f seasons of South Park have been prolific. Yeah, vote South Park. I they're, agree. Not e they're not evergreen. <laughs> like, I don't know if they'll stand the test of time. But for the moment, I meant you can't get any more brilliant exactly. than that. Yeah, I don't think they need to be because they're so sharp. They're so timely. I, and they hit everything right. Mm-hmm. You know? Have you? I haven't watched it. Have you watched their pandemic episode? I haven't watched no, the new the one. No, the hour one, I haven't. Yeah, me neither. I haven't, got to get to I'll it. I'll tell you what I've been watching, The Mandalorian, which is good. Ditto. And uh, there's this there's this uh, series on the Disney network or on the app called Meet the Chimps. What? Yeah, it's like eight episodes. They hang out with this, these chimp families. I'm in. Chimps are fucked up, dude. <laughs> they don't show them. They don't show them uh, on, on the series, but then I Googled, like, I YouTubed how strong are chimps. And then I came across this video where, like, there's this ch group of violent chimps in the Congo. There's, like, a hundred of them that they run, like, a, a fucking gang. And they, they do. Like, there was, there was a, they kill people, man. Like, I mean, like, they put hits out on other chimps. What? I swear to God. There was an alpha chimp that I guess he, he got out of his lane or something. They kicked him from the crew. And then he came back or with something. With a new crew? Well, with the old one, like his old crew. Yeah. So he, they made him, they kicked him out. Like he was banished for some shit. Yeah. Then he tried to talk to like the younger chimps, like he was trying to get his way in. And the people that follow this, this crew, you can YouTube it. Yeah. Next thing you know, I swear to God, bro, the <laughs> next morning, this motherfucker's laid out and they killed him. They whacked him and they left him for everybody to see. Holy like shit. to teach a lesson to the rest of the crew. I swear you got to check it out. It's like some fucking mob shit. It was like broad daylight. The chimps fucking sprawled out like this. They, he, he, now, now the rest of the chimps got the message. Damn. And any the other series I would watch is Cobra Kai. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Quickly, when, obviously you're in it. When is the Netflix, when is the third season come out? Uh, we already shot that. So, right. So um, it comes out, I think, in January, they said. In January. Yeah, and you've yeah. already, it's already been signed for a fourth. It's in the can. We picked up season four, so you know, we're checking on that. So love it. Yeah, love it. Thank you. This has been great. Nah, dude. Uh, you know, people uh, got to come see the shows. You're, you're you're here through the weekend. Yeah, just eight o'clock now, right? Yes. But eight. we sold out, I think. So uh, you got to get your tickets. All right, call fast, get tickets. All right. Thanks, Brad. You got it, buddy.